Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Swiggers and I'm going to be telling you today about some research we've been doing on a new class of bubble-free water electrolyzer. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge my colleague shown down the bottom here who did much of this work in fact. I guess most people are familiar with what electrolyzers are. They are electrochemical devices that convert water into hydrogen and oxygen. And how they typically work is you have two electrodes immersed in a liquid electrolyte. And when a current flows between them, one electrode, the cathode, produces bubbles of hydrogen gas, and the other electrode, the anode, produces bubbles of oxygen gas. You also have to have a separator between them. This is typically a membrane or a diaphragm. This is an ion permeable material, which allows the ions to flow between the electrodes, but it blocks the gas bubbles from crossing over and mixing of course, if you have more than 4% gas uh, oxygen in your hydrogen or more than 4% hydrogen in your oxygen, then that becomes unsafe. It becomes an explosive mixture. And so it's important to keep them separate. Now, bubbles, of course, have many negative effects in water electrolysis. The main one being that they sit on the surface of your electrodes and they block access to that surface by the liquid electrolyte until they release uh, there's no way for the liquid electrolyte to get to the surface. Um, that's called masking of your electrodes, and that creates a high resistance and is one of the reasons that water electrolyzers are relatively energy inefficient today. So I guess we've been working on this problem for about 10 years, uh, and really the question that this uh, project addresses is whether it's possible to produce bulk gases directly from water without the gas bubbles. We want to try to eliminate the gas bubbles entirely. Well, the material that we used for this study is a material called Gore-Tex. You probably are familiar with it. One can buy various clothing items made of Gore-Tex. And Gore-Tex has the property that it, can, that it blocks liquid water from passing through it, but allows gases to go through it. So for example, if you have a Gore-Tex jacket, it will allow the water vapor from your body to go out, but it won't allow liquid uh, water from rain or snow in. And the reason for that becomes apparent when you uh, look at the surface of Gore-Tex. So this is a, a microscopic view of that surface. And you can see that it actually comprises of a mat of very tiny fibrils of Teflon, also known as PTFE. Uh, and so because this mat is porous, the gases can go through, but because Teflon repels water very strongly, uh, water, liquid water can't get through. Now in this video, now Gore-Tex has another property which is not very well known called a gas capillary effect. And this video uh, shows you what happens when you have a sheet of Gore-Tex that we've got there uh, with water in front of it and a gas chamber behind it. What happens when you introduce air bubbles to that Gore-Tex surface? And you can see there that the air bubbles, which you would normally expect to move upwards because of buoyancy, actually get pulled through the Gore-Tex. And, and that happens very rapidly. And that's because of this gas capillary effect. Uh, really, it's very similar to a capillary effect where, uh, where, you pull, uh, where a capillary tube will pull liquid spontaneously up the tube. Uh, on its own, except that this is Gore-Tex pulling gases through. Uh, so uh, it's, but qualitatively, it's very similar. Now, uh, so we wondered then, if instead of putting gas bubbles on the Gore-Tex, we uh, covered the surface of the Gore-Tex with a thin layer of a catalyst that produced gas, whether that gas would be pulled through the Gore-Tex instead of forming bubbles. And so we prepared a series of electrodes uh, and this is a cross section of them, uh, all covered where we had a Gore-Tex base shown over here, covered by a thin layer of catalyst. And, and this layer was around 200 microns thick, so pretty thin. Uh, and embedded in that catalyst layer, we also incorporated a, nick, a fine nickel mesh as a current carrier. Well, when we studied these electrodes, we first prepared them. Uh, and and the, the studies are described in the paper down here, but we found that they are very permeable to gases and they're also leak proof. They don't, they don't allow water through. So there's essentially no possibility of liquid getting through to your gas chamber and actually flooding your gas chamber. 
which is a major problem with this type of gas diffusion electrode. We then built desktop, small desktop electrolyzers, and these comprised of two Gore-Tex-based electrodes facing each other um, with a liquid electrolyte. And in this case, we used an alkaline electrolyte. In fact, we used six molar KOH, which is the standard electrolyte used in alkaline electrolyzers. And then behind each Gore-Tex was a gas chamber to collect the gases that came out, cathode gas chamber to collect the hydrogen, and an anode gas chamber to collect the oxygen. And we used various standard industrial catalysts on both sides. Uh, we had no carbon in our anode, so there was no possibility of carbon corrosion or, or misleading currents from that. Right, so uh, in this video, I'm going to show you what a normal electrode looks like at 100 milliamps a square centimeters. This is bare nickel mesh. You can see lots of gas bubbles being produced there. And then we'll show you what one of our electrodes, a Gore-Tex electrode looks like, also at 100 milliamps a square centimeter, but no bubbles. So you can see there, this genuinely does uh, remove all visible gas bubbles. Now, why are there no gas bubbles visible? Well, we think there are actually three reasons. The first reason is that you're actually forming the gas very close to the liquid gas interface. So inside the Gore-Tex, you have gas. Outside the Gore-Tex, you have liquid. And there's a thin catalyst layer where you're forming your gas. And that gas is dissolving initially in the liquid. And then it's a, because the interface where the gas is very close by, it simply migrates over that interface, and it's easier and quicker for it to do that than to form uh, gas bubbles. The second reason we think that no gas bubbles are formed is that PTFE, of course, has a very low surface energy, which means that gases love to coalesce on those surfaces, on the PTFE surfaces. We also know that gases can move along those surfaces and into and through the Gore-Tex, and so we think that is also happening. And then the third reason that I is what I mentioned before, the gas capillary action. Uh, and we actually measured the capillary pressure for that using the Young-Laplace equation here. And that came out at quite an astonishingly high number, 6.3 bar. The, the negative sign here only indicates the direction. So this was a hydrophobic, hydrophobic capillary action whereas a positive sign would indicate a hydrophilic, hydrophilic one, as you would get with water moving up a capillary tube. Now, when we measured the polarization curves of our e electrolyzers, we noticed something quite astonishing, and that was that the onset potentials shown over here declined uh, as you went up in temperature, and it was a pretty massive decline. Uh, at 40 degrees, it went from 1.48 volts at 40 degrees down to 1.28 volts at 80 degrees. And this is the lowest, as far as we know, the lowest recorded onset potential um, known. Now to get an onset potential, what you do is you draw a straight line through the ohmic portion of the curve and where it crosses the zero axis, uh, that is the onset potential. Now why that's important is that um, at this, at zero current, you effectively have no impedance between your electrodes. And it's very difficult to compare one electrolyzer to another because each electrolyzer has its own impedance. And so the slopes of these curves vary from electrolyzer to electrolyzer. And that's very much dependent on uh, the architecture of the cell and the engineering of the cell. And so to make a comparison with other electrolyzers, you can strip out the effect of impedance by, by looking at the onset potential. What's the voltage at zero current? And the lower that voltage, the higher the intrinsic energy efficiency is of the system. And so this is indicating that we have a system that is intrinsically very energy efficient, um, uh, even though it's impedance unoptimized. So these have not been optimized for impedance, but there's an intrinsic uh, energy efficiency. We also measured the Faradaic efficiency of the, the gases produced was very high, and the hydrogen purity was actually very high as well, even though we had no separator in there, you may have noticed. There was no separator there. So if you have no bubbles, you don't need a separator because it's the bubbles that you have to keep separate. And by taking out the separator, that, makes, that improves the energy efficiency of your electrolyzer as well. 
Now, so as I said, we had this enormous change, a 200 millivolt change in the onset potential. Let me just show you what, um, oops, I moved a bit too quickly. Um, so, so these are polarization curves of a range of other um, industrial and uh, academic electrolyzers. And you can see that all of them have much higher onset potentials uh, than, than 1.28 volts at 80 degrees. Also, there's generally only a small change in onset potential in going from room temperature to 80 degrees. So um, this result is, is really unusual. And uh, it's telling us something about uh, how efficiently this system is splitting water. So, um, so what's happening really is that um, without the bubbles, there is a major decline in the overpotential of both the hydrogen electrode and the oxygen electrode. It's particularly large on the oxygen electrode. At 10 milliamps and 80 degrees Celsius, we found that the uh, overpotential for oxygen generation declined from about 270 millivolts without Gore-Tex, so with bubbles, to about 110 millivolts with Gore-Tex and without bubbles. So that's less than 50%. That is a major decline there. And that is the reason for this very low onset potential. And it's also telling us that this system has a propensity to be very efficient. If you can optimize the impedance as well, you'll get a very efficient electrolyzer out of that. Now, we then uh, set about trying to build an electrolyzer out of this, which meant uh, making uh, cell cells, very flat cells, which we could stack in a cell stack. So typically commercial electrolyzers have many cells stacked in a stack, uh, which is a, a filter, they call it a filter press arrangement. And we prepared these uh, flat cells with two um, Gore-Tex electrodes and a gas chamber between them. Uh, and we discovered a problem that we hadn't anticipated before, and that is that the Gore-Tex itself is non-conductive. So when we routed the, when we had to route the electrical connections from one cell to the next, we had to go around the Gore-Tex, and that meant putting in our bus bar at the top, uh, putting bus bars at the top and the bottom. Normally, with these cells, you would have a bipolar plate that is uh, goes over the top of your electrode. In this case, we had to have bus bars on the side, and then the current had to travel through that nickel mesh uh, on, uh, you know, on the surface of the Gore-Tex to the bus bar before it could go to the next cell. And that created a small amount of resistance. It's not huge, but when you stack these cells up, then that resistance uh, is additive. And in fact, if we calculate it, if you go over about 50 cells, uh, then in fact, that resistance would add up to so much that it would counteract the benefits of operating bubble-free. And so to uh, use this concept of a bubble-free system, we had to find a way around that. And we have been working on that. Um, what it means is that we've had to avoid the use of Gore-Tex because of its non-conductive nature. And we have now come up with a system that is bubble-free without Gore-Tex. Uh, this uh, slide shows our best results. We've configured our system as an alkaline electrolyzer again, and we're comparing it here with a cell of the best commercial alkaline electrolyzer, which uh, we believe may be the Asai Kasei system. Well, that's where the data came from. So that typically operates at about 500 milliamps a square centimeter, and that cell needs about 1.77 volts, or about 83% energy efficiency, according to the higher heating value of hydrogen, or HHV. By contrast, our cell, also alkaline, uh, achieves 500 milliamps at 1.52 volts, which is 97% energy efficient. Even if you go to higher current density, 700 milliamps, their cell would need 1.84 volts or 80%. Ours needs 1.55 volts and 95% energy efficiency. Even at 100% energy efficiency, which at 80 degrees Celsius is 1.47 volts, we actually get a large current, 300 milliamps uh, at that uh, at 100% energy efficiency. So in this region shown over here, we actually have a cell that operates viably at 95 to 100% energy efficiency. Now we haven't published this work, but we will be doing so shortly. And finally, I'll just show you 
that our uh, electrolyzer, actually our bubble-free electrolyzer, actually is better even than the best uh, commercial PEM electrolyzer data that we could find. As I say, we'll be publishing this shortly. So finally, thank you to um, everyone shown here for, um, for their uh, uh, contributions. And I will be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have either here or by email. Thank you.